everybody. What's going on? Nameless here bringing you guys a brand new series called Ant Rants. Today, we're, I'm going to be joined alongside Killa and his brother Doss. We're going to just be chatting, yeah. having a good time. A uh, whole new setup. Graphics aren't in yet, but I'm excited to roll this one out to you guys. How you guys doing, man? Just woke up from a nap. Woke up early, had some steak and shakes. Knew I had to do this. My brother was texting me. Yeah, dude. Did you even go to sleep last night? We were gaming, and then I went to bed. I don't even remember when you, Dude, you, you got Blaine, off. I was showing my girl the David Blaine stuff, and she was trying to tell me I was lying. I'm like, Dude. all right. Lie Speak. about what? I'm going to sword down his story is fake. <laughs> Bro, he, he practiced DOS. This dude, David Blaine, practiced for like a full year, putting uh, swords down his throat. Like, With a sword. Yeah. Oh, my bad. I put the mic up. He, uh, he practiced for a full year, like putting swords down his throat and like just practicing like <laughs> how deep crazy. how deep he could go. <laughs> Yo, we need some girls to be practicing that, to be honest. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, man, he, he's a he's a mess. He also froze shit. himself for like I think it was like sixty some hours. He was like stuck in like a huge ice cube or something. Yeah, I, he also did like he's the whole... alive for seven days. Wait, what? Seven days? I don't think I ever saw that. That's my girl told me earlier. I, I don't know how 100% true that is, but... I don't know. I've seen someone's tweet about saw him being in jail. I'm like, how could he go to jail or some shit? Yeah, dude. I, I tweeted. I said, this fool David Blaine needs to be in a maximum security prison for life. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Someone tweeted, how the hell is that going to happen? He's going to escape or some shit. I'm like, yo, that will be some shit right there. <laughs> dude. No, and yeah. guys digging walls. <laughs> no, we watched this, Doss. We watched this one thing he did. Uh, he was He would, like, go into celebrities' houses and prank them, right? Well, not prank them, like do a magic trick on him. And uh, he was in Will Smith's crib, and he had uh, Will Smith and his wife stand across from each other. He had his wife, or Will Smith's wife, close her eyes, and then he tapped Will Smith on the shoulder, and he said he was going to connect their minds. And he said, yeah, "Open your eyes." And she goes, "Did you feel anything right there?" And she goes, "You tapped me on my shoulder." <laughs> Will Smith's like, "What? He tapped me on my shoulder. Nobody touched you." <laughs> well, she started crying. Education. She was freaking out too. Yeah. But you guys been good, right? Yeah, man, just chilling. And they did the Jamie Foxx one. Remember with the nose in the car? That's dude. Oh yeah, that, that's, that's been wild. crazy. All right, so Sloss. I saw magic last night though, but it, apparently it's like in the mind. Oh yeah, we were watching the same video too. Yeah. Remember, it's like it's all like just like people's weaknesses. Like for example, like remember the one with Pharrell or was it Drake where he's like, all right, look at my hand, like look at my palm. Think of an animal that can fit in my palm. Oh, yeah, that was with Drake. Yeah, and, remember? But yeah, remember the frog? David Beckham said the same exact animal? He, he literally said the frog. Remember, too? It was literally yeah, the same Yeah, he finessed them into all saying the same animal, but, like, all right, here, let me ask you. Doss, think of a, an animal that can fit in the palm of my hand. What would you say? Has to be frog, right? Yeah, a bird. Yeah, a frog. Yeah, exactly. And, like, he finesses them into saying that. So it's like almost like a, it's like a mind trick. So I, I think that's how he does that. And I think he just practiced like fucking uh, putting frogs down his throat. <laughs> I don't Dude, know. you really think he's swallowing frogs and just spitting them back up? Like what? No, I actually saw a special um, on that, on, on him. And uh, he actually does do that. Like he practices weird shit to get ready for, uh, for like to, to do tricks on people. Because I mean, you got to think like doing those tricks is making him millions, right? So... I mean, honestly, like, taking his time to practice that and master it, it's, like, smart by him. But, yeah, I mean, it's a weird-ass lifestyle. A clever dude. The devil. I don't, I don't know about all that, but... What, we don't know about all what? Just that whole him making millions so he's going to swallow frogs. <laughs> no, I mean, well, basically what I'm saying, it's his craft. So, like, he's doing yeah, that. No, I understand. And he's practicing yeah, yeah, that he's so he could trick people. That, absolutely. Yeah, I know. I mean, he's like just... a job. He's on some weird shit. Let's just leave it at that. Like, yeah. you got to be a weirdo to do that. And, and he said he was like doing X-rays, trying to look for like a spot, this and that. Like, he must yeah. really like practice his tricks. Bro, he put an ice pick through his hand, and it it literally left no blood, bro. That makes no fucking sense. But anyways, side, like, enough about David Blaine, bro. Let's talk about you, Sloss, and and your bro. How have you uh? How have y'all been like since uh, this game came out? Like, you, I don't think you you competed for like a month, right? Or like like two months maybe. We'll just yeah. say I didn't compete at all, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what events have you went to in this game Sheesh. so far? What to? What's the first event of this game? I went to Atlanta. That shit was hype. Yeah, we went to Atlanta. Yeah, we went to Atlanta. Okay. It was lit. 
How'd you do at that event? I got trashed. <laughs> got thrashed. Oh no no! I went to I went. Well, what event did I go at? Nezlo Sharp and Mirror. What event was that? It was Atlanta. Not this year. I was at that event. I don't know. I don't know what event it was, but either way, basically, whatever happened in this game transpired into you saying, "Screw this!" Right? Like you. Dallas you're... and Atlanta. I think I've been to both. I think I went to both of them this year. Yeah. So you obviously like you guys didn't place good, right? I don't remember you like getting like top Marble, top right? sixteen. Yeah. So Mitch. whatever. Whatever oh, happened to those? Match with Fears too. That first one with Fears. Yeah, yeah, my went to Atlanta. So I whatever event off, then I came back and went to Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever happened at those tournaments caused you to like retire. So like, why? Why did you like quit? And like, what were the like? What were the reasons like for you to like stop playing? Like, I don't think I think I think a lot of people like you still have a lot of fans who think you can be competing, and I, I think a lot of people want to know like why you decided to not play. <clears throat> as most of you know, I have two kids. So, like, you know, a lot of my time was when I'm grinding nonstop, you know. You know how it is getting on at 6 p.m. every day, scrimming till like, midnight. Yeah. Spend any time with your family or whatever. You know how it is. And that that was getting to me for a while. So I was just like, I don't know. I kind of felt some type of way about sacrificing so much time, like, spending with my daughter, even maybe my girl. Yeah. That, like, I probably would have never stopped unless I got banned because that's just like my mentality. Yeah. But I think it happened for the better because the conversation one night, we would have just constantly been fighting an uphill battle, you know, with these new teams, these op- like playing with AMs, I guess, or open bracket. And <clears throat> I just thought it wasn't worth it at this point, especially for how far behind I was. Yeah, because at that so point. Started doing things, spending time with my daughter a lot. Have you been have you been happier than when you were like uh you were 100%. playing? Cause that shit's yeah. stressful, dude. Like when you're not on like a good team. So, like I, like I, when you choose a career and it's not going the way you want it, you know, it's just it's not good. So that's kind of where I was stuck at. I was teaming with people that I felt like didn't have the same vision as me or didn't really know if they wanted to play. I feel like that was my whole world at war year. I yeah. played with people that weren't sure if they still wanted to do this and I just felt like it was kinda whack and unfair. <laughs> sacrificing time and grinding hard that you know it's always come back hey you know sharp doesn't want to play anymore after we just put two months in and then nezlo wasn't sure if he wanted to even compete and then mir was a no-brainer he didn't want to compete neither so i was playing with three people who didn't really even want to compete you know the drive's not there when in the back of their mind they don't even want to play what do you think they find other things do you think that uh it's well do you think it's age or do you guys think it's almost like ha- having success and then having a lack of it, like, and w- when you're coming up, you you grind and then you get that success and it feels amazing and you want to keep getting it. So like you're saying, people are losing motivation. Do you think it's because they've been at the top before and the, and they and the, they're not yeah. there anymore? So so they're like, I don't want to put in the work again, dude. That was a grind. Like, what do you think causes that? I remember. I don't know if I was watching some. I think I was watching. I watched a document. Like, was it a? Oh, was it? Hold up. It was uh, one of the Barber brothers. Tiki I Barber, Ronnie Barber. Though, honestly, uh, and, like when you yeah, reach a pinnacle, when you reach a pinnacle in your like career, so like say I won champs, right? I felt on top of the world, you know? Like yeah. I was, I felt like I accomplished anything. It was like the biggest high in life. And they were saying like, just like, you're always going to try to want to reach that, you know? You're always going to want to try to get back to like that pinnacle you were at. Be the same. Like it'll, it'll, Pretty much, I remember. I think it was Tiki Barber who like fell into a deep dark depression after he retired, because like he didn't have anything to do. He couldn't contribute to his team. He couldn't wake up like, and I don't know. I feel like that's how it was for me. Just like constantly trying to chase that like, person trying to chase that like, you know that that like cloud nine, that pinnacle, right? That, yes, that feeling where you just feel on top of the world, and if you don't reach it, you just like it's. I guess that you could fall into a depression. Yeah, I mean, competitor, a true competitor, and really want to win. I know for me, like Call of Duty was, like, there's. I always say this quote, like, there's more to life than Call of Duty, but Call of Duty was just the biggest thing in my life, right? And I think that uh, that that it was like that for a lot of people, especially people like you, me, people who were playing way back in the day, because we were playing for like no money. So uh, 
it was it's such a big thing in our life and like the only thing we played for was to like be the best right like to win so like once you won and then you couldn't like you weren't winning anymore like it's it's only so long you can like take constant like defeat you know what i mean when uh True. like i remember uh so i had this roommate uh one of my best friends yaya and uh he joined like this basketball league when he was in college when we were in college and we lived on campus and they would lose a game and he would come back and he'd be like bro i don't know how you deal with losing like all the time like as a pro, like as a pro gamer, as a competitor, like I don't know how you do that. Like I lose one of these basketball games and I'm just pissed off the rest of the night. I was like, dude, I'm telling you, this shit is hard, bro. That's why I'm pissed off all the time. It's hard. It's hard to deal with the stress when you have when you've won before and you have expectations to win. Like people are expecting you to be good and you're also expecting yourself to be good. Do you think that that's like a reason that like stressed you out? Telling everybody around you like I'm gonna do this and then when it doesn't happen, it's. I learned a lot from Rambo. Winning is teaching, losing is learning. Yeah. And it's not about how you win, it's about how you lose. The way you handle yourself when you lose. What do you mean by that? Like how you bounce back? Yeah, like everybody can, you know, winning feels good. Everybody can win, you know? But it's what truly separates, like, the good from the great are the ones that can take an L and bounce back and, like, you know, fix the mistakes. Learn from it. Yeah, it's I, not about I how you win, it's about how down. you lose. Yeah, I mean, and understand. that's a that's a big thing, especially like when any any sport or like esport or anything develops, it's like those little things that give you an edge, like stuff that you've been preaching like years ago, like bouncing it's back from a loss is something that's like huge now, dude. Like you you can rarely make roster changes, so you got to be able to bounce back from losses. Competition is so like there's so much more competition now, especially with like twenty four seven Call of Duty with the leagues, the events. Like it's a full time job for these people and. Oh yeah, you know competition is getting so stiff. Hmm. Yeah, teams are getting really good. Even the Australians, you know, like Mind Freak, you know, they and some teamwork. So it's like, it's really good that we're building these regions. Really like. Yeah, I mean, I I, competition I, skill gap. Right it now. it, really it makes it tougher, dude. Anybody can win. Yeah, like the Aussies have been playing pretty good. Like they can compete. Like I see Tainan Mines, like they made it through relegation. Like they're obviously not the best team, but they can still compete. Like way better than they used to be able to. Yeah, they're gonna start seeing international rosters soon. Yeah, I think that'd be dope. It's gonna get to that point hopefully. I know growing and we get the developer support we need. I see it going. I see it going big. There's a lot yeah. of players. Like, I know Spacely will go out to Europe and play for Unilad. You know, he's not in the league. I know he would literally give up his lifestyle and his life and go out there and play. Like, I know there's players. Twiz did it. Remember Twiz back in, was it Bob's 3? Yeah. He went out and played with. Now it's easier for, like, these big orgs to get, like, visas and stuff because they're, like, big corporations now instead of, like, these little, like, you know, where, like, COD back in the day, you guys were playing for hundreds of dollars. There was no way you were getting a visa to play in another country. Yeah. You know, they looked at esports as a joke. Nowadays, it's like a, it's that you guys are considered athletes. You know, yeah. you get athletic visas to go play in other countries. And I just shit. brought up a good topic yesterday, or a good point yesterday. Like, we're all esports like fans, and imagine when we're like forty and the generation below us are esports fans, and we're still esports fans. So it's just gonna constantly just keep growing and getting passed along through like families and generations. And yeah, yeah, we talked about this. We talked about this the, yesterday, dude. Mm-hmm. It's like. It's like gaming is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger simply because of like our generation, like in the generation before us. I saw uh, one of the watching dudes, things. I was watching E3 and one of the dudes like uh, that was hosting the Bethesda conference like said something pretty interesting. He was like, uh, about eight, nine years ago, I was here and it was, it was a small room. He's like, I, I remember when there was like less than like a thousand people here or something like that. I don't know. I don't know if he said eight years, maybe longer. And he was like, uh, he was like, all you guys grew up and had kids, and now this room's huge. He was like, it's only going to get bigger and bigger. At stadiums now, dude. Like yeah. they're they're filling out stadiums for this shit. Like when I went to UMG Philly, it was in a damn hotel room in a ballroom of a hotel. Last event I went to, I mean, it was it, literally walking into it. It was like a mate. Like you could just tell the the you know the the level it's getting to. Like it's professional atmosphere and most of these production is like only getting better too so the events yeah, are only getting better. that's what i'm saying yeah. like people used to flame mlg and stuff and like they're a young company like give give her time wait wait until like our kids are are all like our age you know mlg is going to be still around and their production is going to be top tier like yeah i mean 
especially like I, I work at MLG now, like in the analyst desk and stuff like that. So I see behind the scenes a lot. Dude, the amount of stuff that goes into putting on an open event is unbelievable. Dude, you guys wouldn't believe it, bro. They have a they have a trailer in the back inside of the convention center that is just like a hundred screens, bro. I swear, and just like people everywhere. Like the people in there are drill sergeants. They're like, all right, yo, uh, pull up scoreboards on on uh, on camera three. Like, I right, prepare this, prepare this. Like, dude, there's a lot of working yeah, parts. Crazy, Everybody has a job. The staff is huge. Like, there's so many things, and and that that to me, that's that's crazy. Because when we when we were coming up, there was, bro, there was Cheers. nothing. Remember well, I was trying that... to get an MLG a few years ago. I knew that shit was going to keep getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah. remember, uh, remember the bomb threat this year? We had it literally. So like, the events is what, right? Usually Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. We yep. literally missed a whole Friday, a whole Friday, and they managed to squeeze in the event all of Saturday and Sunday. A whole event in two days. Unbelievable. That was unreal. That, that was crazy, dude. I remember that shit. Jeez. Yeah. Like, like, the weight could have possibly costed, like, our team, but, like, the fact that, like, we even was able to finish the event and actually – and I remember that, too, because Beers didn't show up to our match, I think. And the guys at the MLG, like, the refs, dude, they gave us, like, 40 extra minutes. I was so surprised. And this guy fears. Hold up. We're already down a map. Oh, like, yeah. He didn't even show up. He's overslept, right? Yeah. He, just, nah, he had some personal issues, but. Oh, okay. I don't know what his, his problem was. I still even talk. I don't even think anybody's talked to him since. But, yeah, right. nah, it's just crazy. Back to that, that uh, back to, back to that topic, because I kind of want to expand on it more about uh, after you won all the events and stuff, and then. Ghost is a pretty good year. Beginning of AW wasn't too bad. Uh, do you think, like, you, the choices you made in terms of teammates and also, like, the way, you know, like, how you, you know, like, when we're young, we're, we're raging, we, we tweet whatever we want. Like, the stuff you did, like, when you're on certain orgs, do you think that stuff negatively impacted your, your career? Or do you think you could have, like, 100%. yeah, like, what would you have done differently? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I can tell them everything. Bro, <laughs> The Especially... last mistake I made going back to uh, Bob's three renegades, I should have mm-hmm. just, I, I should have just showed my match. Yeah, dude, you let the emotions get the best of you, like the majority of your career, dude. It's always yeah, bothering it was... me. It's all because of the competition, though. He has such a like competition mindset that like nothing else matters but to like be the and best. It was a blessing like, and a curse. Like he, he like yeah, there was times yeah. where you wouldn't listen to anybody. And it would, it would work out amazing for you. And then there was times where you didn't listen to anybody and it, it just wasn't horrible. Hurt. Yeah. Do you think it made, that... it, made it, it made and break me? Yeah. It, it, is, it made me who I am, though. I don't know. It just... I mean, you can't regret it, really, because you might have not won champs if you, if you weren't like that. But it's just like certain times. I, I feel like as the scene evolved, like, you never really, like, thought about it. Like, yo, I might need to, like, change it up, like, and not be the, like, is like opinionated. Oh, okay. so I'm gonna have to, or or not be such a, or not talk shit about somebody because this could be my future teammate, you know, or something like that. I feel like a yeah. lot of people fell behind because of that, like Parasite too. Like there's so there's a lot of people who are like that, like super. Oh, they won't play with you. Yeah, they they just won't play with you. Or orgs won't pick you up, or I mean, it goes the list goes on and on. Sponsorship deals like orgs. It's so big now with like these orgs. Like it's bigger than just like you know, you want to play, like, even if your your friends or whoever's on your team and they want to pick you up, like, the org can say, no, we're not doing it because of sponsorship deals. Like, this dude's going to ruin our, you know what I mean, actually, our name, our career. Like When it started going downhill and Ghost, when we joined yeah, Cursed, yeah, I would say did. that was the downhill. I mean, it was, was just, it was just the, it was just, I think that was just the pinnacle of your, like, I don't give a shit anymore, Yeah, I was bro. probably on, you know I was mean? probably, like, I, I was, I was on, like, like you said, I was, I was, like, I guess, I was high, you know, or I was high on my pinnacle list or whatever, however you high want to put hours. it. No, you, you, you were on top of the world. Remember? That's how you were at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, and then we replaced you for Ricky. Yeah. Downhill. Yeah. I mean, I remember on that team, you, we, you were just argue a lot. Like you didn't, you, like you, you hated the management. So you just like, I don't want to say you're like disrespectful, but you were unresponsive, which is almost kind of like disrespect. But they weren't really for they, an org. They were really, really paying us though. Like so, I, I don't know. It's different. But I was just starting to you, blow up then. I was really just starting to. You were hard to deal with. Is the thing, 
and and like it, it stressed a lot of people out with the thought of like possibly playing with you because like, you were hard to deal with for teammates and also for orgs. You know what I mean? Like there was no like one or the other. And timing, like it was just immature. It was hard to get. I mean, you you played so much. Like literally, you, I remember like your teammates used to hit me up in the DMs, like, "Yo, can you wake your brother up? We got like a two K." Like, you know, like you didn't know when to go to bed because you would just play COD all night, and then you seven eight o'clock roll around. Your teammates would go to bed. You'd play wagers with so and someone else, and keep playing and playing. Next thing you know, you got a two K to play. Get an hour to sleep. I got your teammates texting me and shit. Bro, and me. It, Doss, what's crazy is like the way it sounds. Uh, people probably thought like throughout Sloss's career, like, dude, that's such an easy thing to be on top of, like being on time, being there, whatever, like just being like a good teammate. Like, but I don't think like Adam never th thinks about it like that way. Like he thought about it like I'm getting on to have fun and get better. Like that's like I play COD. Like you always thought about it like I play COD. That's what I do. Like all this other stuff, like. All right, that's yeah, cool. he never looked at it from like a business point. He always was, it was I don't know. It, and I think told yeah. him that he needed to brand himself and he needed to like, you know, I always told him that he needed to brand himself when he was on top and like start I just doing think he was too early. And, I think Adam know, was too early. I, I think there's, no, no, no. Go ahead. Problems. People don't realize like I had the hand problems. Like there was a lot of things like, oh, I, like looking back on it, there's so many ups and downs, I guess you could say in my COD career. What we're talking like, about when I had to wear a glove. Remember that? That's yeah, crazy. dude, you wore a glove for a full year. You had like arthritis or something. Man, dude. W from, and it's crazy too because I used to get on scrim every day and I couldn't feel my right hand. And I remember mm -hmm. talking to, uh, I don't know, even like, but I never told my teammates because you know I never wanted to give them any type of doubt. So I always would like much more than what I actually. Like I told my teammates, like I tell Mir now, like, dude, I was on main stage playing for top four and I didn't feel my right hand. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you were, yeah. you were, I thought you were a really good teammate. Like whenever we were practicing and stuff, like, like really, like really, yeah. like you were, you were a good teammate. Like you actually helped me get a lot better. I just think like the other things you, you made it a lot, like kind of difficult to, to, to reach the management. Like, like Chino was... says he's one of his, his better teammates. Like. You know, knows like I mean, Adam joined that DT team. What Black Ops three and they weren't even winning matches before him. Dude. Two, they were fucking zero and twelve or some shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I brought him back to five hundred or something. Something like was, and I remember telling them when I joined the team, like because like they were played for Optic one time. You filled in and you got your break. <laughs> <laughs> you got to surround. That's what I'm gonna do for like the rest of this game. Maybe next year, give myself a better chance. Is just surround my people or surround myself around people that. <clears throat> winners but people that are smart you can't surround yourself around dumb people i agree with that you can never be the smartest person in the room dude that's not never mm -hmm. it's never good for you um what i what i would say is i mean you, like did you ever think long term like when you were playing like let's say let's take it back to a, end of aw never. right that never so Bla so black ops 2 you killed it black ops 1 you killed it black ops 2 you killed it ghost you killed it um, other than the whole champs thing, but you you did decent years all three of those years. AW was decent, um, and then it started to go downhill. When things start to get started to get a little bit like bad, like placings, you know, stuff like that. Did you ever like start to think long term? Yeah, like because like obviously I have kids now, and you didn't have a kid you know, in AW though. I mean, so, and then yeah, so, I guess it all started with I guess I had a girlfriend, and then yeah. I had a kid. When did that happen? Just, I could balance it and do it, but like for a while, like when Phil passed in the beginning of IW, yeah. To, you know, I was trying to balance Rest my career peace. and my relationship. I was just, I'm just having a kid on that, like at that time too. So I had those three things. My best friend just passed. You know, my relationship was like I was putting so much time in the game that my relationship was like back and forth. You know, I didn't know like I was kind of throwing my relationship away because the game wasn't paying off. You know. Yeah. So, like, I had that in the back of my head, like, damn, I'm not even doing well, and I'm not even spending time with, like, my family. Yeah, that's so that a always, lot, like, dude. Back of my head, like, you know, I'm just not succeeding. I'm not really getting the most out of anything. Actually, last couple of years, I guess I dwelled on that. He yeah, I mean, everything in life for this game, dude. Like, he didn't even come to my – he didn't even come to my uh, wedding – my uh, my wedding party. Or not my wedding party. That's my, tough, uh, dude. 
engagement party? He had, a, he had a 5K that was, like, super important. It was, like, to qualify for champs or something. And I remember he – it was something. It was something for my wedding because he wanted – he was going to be my best man. And uh, he told me the night before, he's like, look, I can't come. Like, I got this. And I said, dude, dude, your career comes first. You know, and he didn't even win the thing. So he's like, damn, I could have went. You know, they got, Just like – an example, yeah. They got, like – they got dropped out early. And he still couldn't go to my thing, you know. So it was like, you know, he's missing all these family functions, all these important things for Todd, and like, on, you know, and he's going so hard, and it's not paying off. Eventually, that, I mean, yeah, watch that, the interview. That's, that's 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 tough, dude. That's how life can be sometimes when you're doing something good. Where you gotta Let's put talk your about own that too, it. like how much how much sacrifice that uh, you know. Yeah, that we like have to you, put in, bro. Balance that this year. I think that's why you took the break, and I feel like it was a good idea that you took. Like it was good that you took the break because you realize, like, hey, I'm gonna have a brand new team. You know, they might not even be up to my skill level, and you know, you were gonna be putting what 10, 12 hours a day, and you know, sacrificing maybe that time potentially with your girl, maybe yeah. your family, maybe things you want to do. Like you know how it is. It's it's yeah. He took the smart route. I mean, for me, it was like uh. It was it was it was one of those things where, dude, we've been playing for so long, we've been through it all in terms of competition, life, balancing. Like we've we've learned anything and anything that has to do with trying to balance life and and work with our travel schedules. But anyways, when I got dropped this year, like I could have joined a team, like you said, we would have been probably really average, yada yada. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, there's just so many things that I know. Like, there's more to me that I can do. I was like, I'm just gonna take a risk and and try to do it, you know, like because. Like any like to do this gaming stuff to be an esports player like you had to take a risk at some point and like go full time. All the, risk. Yeah, like when whenever I did that was Ghost and I went for the I went for it full time and uh, it worked out. So I was like, let me try to do something else, dude. Let me see if it works out for me. And time will tell. It might not work out, but it it might it might in the end and it might be better for me. But I can tell you Cry. one thing: I've been a whole lot happier. Like I'm, I'm, money doesn't. Uh, actually, money doesn't buy happiness, in my opinion, because I'm making less than I was before at the moment, but I'm a lot I mean, happier. You're less stressful. It's not a lot less than I was before, but I'm still a lot happier. And I feel like the opportunity is is like a higher ceiling, which is why I asked you that question about, like, did you ever think long term? Because I think that's a mistake I made was not thinking really long term until maybe like last year I had some thoughts when my team wasn't doing well. And so I had this in the back of my mind, like, all oh, whenever we weren't performing this year. So I went for it. You got to put it like this way. If Adam was thinking long-term anyway throughout his career, he would have been had a YouTube started. He would have been had a Twitch stream schedule. You know, he put it all into the competition. Like I said, you know, it was all about not revealing the strats, not wanting to stream team practice, not wanting to, you know what I mean? Like, he threw away so much, like, potential just to, you know, try to get these high placings. and. Even in Ghost, like, still like didn't understand why I didn't stream, and I would go I out of the that. And it's just like I don't know. It would just make it that much harder for me to go to my spots. And don't get this nowadays with the people. Me and Ghost compared to the people that play us and like the pro teams now is a joke, bro. They're not doing anything crazy. They're not doing anything out of the ordinary. Like oh, the yeah, shit I was doing in Ghost was far fetched. I didn't want to give my shit away. I didn't want to show people how easy it was, so I didn't stream it. I just let Phil, you know, yeah. Phil Rack and the viewers, he, he always like was like, dude, are you sure, man? Like, turn on your stream, bro. Like, you know, I'm killing it. I'm like, don't worry about it, man. Like, I was never like that. Like, he, you were he, just like, an in the moment person, dude. Like, you thought more about yeah, those. Exactly. In you the thought moment about, and how to get first place, how to be number one. Yeah, you always thought about like, like, like during, like if you were to fucking teleport right now into the minds, like if you were to teleport into the mindset you had during those ghost tournaments, you would think right now, like, bro, I'd rather be on top, like, the best search and destroy player in the game. Because you were, for a point, in Ghost. You'd rather have that respect and be that than possibly give up some of your strats and stuff for a long-term plan. Because I know now, like, you wish you streamed and never stopped streaming, right? Like, you would be yeah, but, uh, the number one costume. But then again, you know, but then again, I, you know, I wouldn't have maybe placed as well because, you know, we depended a lot on search at the time. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a slippery it's slope, dude. It's tough, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, I think a lot of people don't have long-term plans, and it's it's tough. Like, <clears throat> all the people in the pro league, like they're not even streaming. What do they expect to do? Like, look at like look Stresses at us. Man. Out, we were all, they, do they think they're gonna be on top of the rest of their careers? It's not gonna happen. They're gonna get unlucky. They're gonna something's gonna happen. You know, a roster change or something. 
throws them under the bus and it just or or you know it all start like that's what I don't understand about MLG. That's Bro, Sloss, it people is. People that aren't making the most of their career right now, like, I wish I could tell them, like, I regretted it. Why aren't you guys? Dude, I it is impossible regret, but... to stay at the top for, more, for, for like, an extended period of time. Like, even, they look at Optic, like, they did it for, what, two and a half years? And in, in those two and a half years, there were short droughts in between? And you're not getting on a roster like that, like, now. Like, that's just not going to happen with how much COD changes every year. Happy? People don't realize that it's a lot of luck that goes in the good team. Yeah, it's hard work to oh, yeah. but like mixing personalities and play styles. It's like for me, Impact, when I won my world championship, I was lucky to land with those players, you know? Of course. Be stuck with it. I could have been nothing. I couldn't even be in this call or talk right now, maybe if that didn't happen. But like together, like our organization made us keep that team together because he believed in us. But I would have never thought I was could win with those people. Like, you know, when we formed that team, we were like a top eight team, but we didn't think we were dominant. Like, yeah. you know? Yeah, finding mirrors, like finding our a needle in a haystack, dude. Our personalities, like, mixed well with our time. style. So it was literally just luck that we formed. And, like, I could, like, read Car – like, Karma would make the play, for example, that I would, like – you know, I'd be watching Karma, like, dang, like, I would have made the same exact play. Like, that's when you know, like – are you watching somebody and he make the same exact plays you made he's like that's when you know like that's your duo that's your teammate like that's chemistry either right there that, that, that's what chemistry is like when you know what somebody's thinking before they do it like that's when you you found it right like that that's it it's it's hard and you're right i think what you said about do these people think they're going to be on top forever that's like a that's something i wish they would understand like people i don't think people like think Hard enough about it bro like if you're 18 or 19 bro you know what i would do to be 18 or 19 on a on a on a league team right now making like six seven grand a month like potential through the roof cod getting bigger and bigger like bro we're 24 25 now right imagine if you were 18 slots on a league team uh when we were 18 we were competing for a grand yeah right that's like one thing that like I don't like that the COD community like kind of pisses me off about like in this day and age is that like nobody that's on top is producing content. Like back in the day when I was like when the COD was like my life, you know, I had Nate shot. I had a bunch of people. There was a bunch of people that, that would always be putting up YouTube videos, always like always like being connected to like the community. There's nobody in the pro league right now that is doing that. Not even the people in Optic. They're not even putting content up. Like Scum. Like he used to put content up. Like I used to watch all these people. Nowadays you don't see any like why doesn't like Gunless, like one of my favorite players to watch. Yeah, true. Like, nobody really knows nothing never, about him. Never stream. Like this dude is a beast. I watch him every event go off. Like why can't he just make a video so I can like <clears throat> people want to be gunless and replicate his play style but nobody knows about gunless, nobody I mean, knows about gunless play style. I mean, you can't watch them. I mean, you gotta reach uh, out to your, your it's community. it's also yeah. it's also different because like they they came in at a different time and content was never really the big thing when like they came into COD pro scene. We had but, to grow COD. Oh yeah, dude, hundred percent. But like the thing is, is like the foundation's already there for them, and they're getting paid a decent amount. So like I, I think a huge driving factor for to make content was always to make money. Like I I wouldn't. Like, obviously, I love it. I enjoy doing it. Like, I'm not, like, cashing the hell out off of streaming and stuff. Yeah, so, no, I'm, I I, I'm doing it. But I'm I doing it partly for the enjoyment. But, like, before I, before I did it for, for, money, for money, like, like I used to like, do it to pay my car bill, Doss. Like, I used to do it to make $300 to pay my car bill because I had no I other revenue see, stream. I just see people get mad at, like, MLG and stuff for, like, like try not making it as big as it could be, but like MLG is the only one putting out content. Like they've started that taking shots video. Like they're trying to make content and like keep it relevant. Like you know, they're what trying I mean? to create like, robberies. They're trying to create. They're exactly. Trying to create they're stuff. they're doing their part. We just need the rest of the community to chip in if we want this to be as big as Counter Strike. If we want it to be as big as all these other esports that all these people talk about it being as big, we got to put our our work in. All right, so let me let me direct the conversation to Sloss here for a second. Sloss, what do you th do? You still care about the growth of COD, like, I really like do. to to your core? Do you still care about it? It's my career. It's my profession. If 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 we if they're not stream, if everybody around me, you know, in my 
career path. I don't know what I'm looking for. Uh, if everybody around you in your space, in 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 your your space, they're they're, they're using this. They're in the same career path as I am, right? Okay. And if the work, you know, well, I don't know how the platforms or whatever is nowadays. With can you say that again? It cut out. I don't like with Twitch the platform. I I just remembered, like you said last night, havoc, right? Yeah, havoc. Because like. <clears throat> Remember you were like host havoc. I was like okay because you you want to grow the S and D tournament scene, so mm -hmm. more viewers comes in. You know, maybe one day he'll host me back after you know just like give it, give in like you know or, or just like you know spreading like that's how it used to it's be. It's just like spreading it like like when you, if you end your stream, like for example, say slow. And this is my theory about havoc's personality, community his is. play style. You know, now my fans can learn something about havoc because I hosted him. Yeah, People I wonder mean, why I have a fan base. It's because I've streamed for so long that, like, even if at one day, you know, became a fan of me, some random person just tuned in, you know, I put enough content and streams out there to where, like, if one person came to my stream that day and became a fan, you know, like, I, I'd have a thousand fans because that's how much I'd stream every day. Yeah. That's how I, I remember Merck saying that. One fan, one, one fan a day, if you keep it consistent. That's that's all that matters, Huge. dude. Yeah, that, yeah, that's literally all that matters. And like what you said, I think you hit the nail the nail in the coffin right there. Is like if you when you when you're streaming, right? So let's, let's say you turn your stream on after this, right? And you get 300 viewers. Let's say you stream for four hours and you're playing S and D, right? And then you turn your stream off, and let's say 200 of them just get off, right? They're like, all right, Sloss is done streaming. Like let's say they were watching you for your personality, right? They're like, all right, Sloss is done streaming. They leave and they go somewhere else, right? If you if you host Havoc or something who's playing Search, like they might be a fan of him at that point, and they might go in there talking like they know you. They might go in there talking about you. Like it just like it can only organically grow the scene. So I think that that's a big thing. Is like the people who are doing the same thing need to start supporting each other and and like what they're doing. For example, I've been playing with Rally a lot because I like what he's doing. Yeah, same. I like what Rally's doing. He's playing a lot of Search and Destroy. Big shout out to Rally real quick. And uh, he's been grinding, dude. So I've been hosting him every time I get off. If he's live, I host him and trying to play with him, stuff like that. Like just supporting each other. I think that that that's he sees very the bigger important. picture is what you're saying. He sees. Yeah. He knows this, we're all this gonna is make life. a career. If we're gonna make all make, if we're gonna make enough money to be able to survive and make a career out of this, we need to all help each other. We're all the fish in the sea. You know, that's how it is. So, that's how it was when I came up. Like I remember Nature always hosting me. Scump always hosting me. Like. If it wasn't for Scump and Nature always hosting me, I wouldn't have people helping me out with me maybe helping some others out too. I wouldn't be to where I am today. Probably where I wouldn't be streaming. Be. So like, yeah, I couldn't have done it with people without people like Fizzer hosting me, people like Nature I used to host. Like, I couldn't have done it without those people. Like, and even like when Nature would host me, and they're diehard fans. I'm a fan of Killer, but. I'm more of a fan of Optic. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's how it would just go. Like, it doesn't... Yeah, my fans could be fans of me, but guess what? I host the Havoc. They could like Havoc, you know? Maybe they'll tune in the stream next time. You know? All right, so I'm going to ask you a tougher question here. So what do you like... Like, you know, I asked you before if you didn't think long-term, and you said no. Like, what do you think long-term, like, for now? Like, let's do, like, a... Not even like super long-term. Let's do a three-, four-year path. Like, what are your plans, like... Uh, like are you are you actively thinking about it and making plans for it? Like, wh what are your thoughts on that? I actually really been thinking about like I I mean at this point, yeah, I would love to compete. You know, I I mean this is. But do you think you can do it for three or four more years after like last few have not been successful? Because personally, I think there's a lot better career paths for you that you might not even have thought of. But I want to know your opinion on it first. That's like a lot of people say like. Yeah, maybe you should just start streaming, maybe this and that. Like, the random people that come to my stream and say that are just, like, the random people that come to my stream, you know, because all my, like, true, like, supporters and, I guess you could say fans, I'm a competitor, you know, but a lot of people just think, like, you know, I'm stupid for not taking a different path or this and that. And I don't think you're stupid. I just think it's... Stupid, it's, it's, just, like, wasting opportunity, wasting opportunity. It's just, like, all right, so... All right, we'll, we'll talk about this. Dosh, you can weigh in on this, too, because you haven't spoken a little bit. Like, the way I think is, like, there's people in the NBA, NFL, whatever, they, they overstay their welcome 
and, and I'm not saying you've overstayed your welcome because you could definitely be disgusting. Like I played a tournament with you the other day and you you carried me the whole time and I definitely feel like I could still compete. But there's there comes a time where like skill doesn't mean at all. Like there there's reputation, there's there's like just acceptance and stuff like that. And it, it's gonna be really hard, especially like with two kids and stuff. So I was I was thinking like you being a coach is like a way better like career path for you because you can really create like content and do that. It. Like I think that that's like way smarter. Like I I just I know there's a lot of fans like this is the number one thing I see on the Reddit's loss. You don't I know you don't read it. The number one thing I see on there and on Twitter is like like Sloss, I don't know why he's still competing. Like these people who criticize you because of that. I don't know why he's still competing. He he like he's not going to get on a good team yada yada. I think he should try doing something else. And have has any of that criticism got to you at all? <clears throat> for a while, <clears throat> excuse me, for a while like when I missed that event, I stayed at home. I remember I played S&D all weekend. That's one thing I always did. I always went with, like, the content path. That's one thing, like, I bounced with Phil, you know. Me and Phil were, like, a duo of entertainment. We bounced off each other, and we helped each other out. And we didn't depend on nobody. We depended on ourselves. Like, I feel like with, like, you know, that <clears throat> that set me back with a lot of my content. It's just being able to, like, yeah. bounce off Phil. Yeah. I just, like, I don't have the same passion that I used to have for it. You know, like sad to say, like streaming and getting yeah. entertaining, you know, and just putting smiles on people's faces. I mean, I still do enjoy it. I mean, you get you burnt know? out after a while. I mean, it's just yeah, I burned myself out. Yeah. But why I don't I, I had so much to the point where my hand would hurt. And why don't you try to coach a team? I feel like that would, you would be so good at it, dude. Like I would have picked you up as a coach in a heartbeat. Like that's something I'm that actually, I, told I already, you. I told him I'm about talking to a team right now about coaching. Oh, like well, I bought, I, I'd be able to spend more time with my family. Be to a team. He definitely thought about a name because we, me and him, talked about it off stream. Like you know, just talked and like he knows that, he knows that if he wants to set himself up for his family and you know where there's steady the pay and there's you know he, and he gets to spend time spend with them, but also time. be involved in Call of Duty and like actually like because as a coach if you you know coach him to a championship you get a championship you know that's your team you know yeah. like he can definitely yeah. take pride in making the best team you know like he still he still has the S&D stress in the back of his head he still knows how to play the game he's just not as fast reacting as some of these 7 18 year olds coming into the league not true at all. You know, the TJ Haley <laughs> decimates the these and that. Right, I not mean, true at all. I think, you know, Adam, I think... Don't, you don't got the snapper like that. I'm just no, being honest. I, I mean, not, all you older guys, you lose it after a while. I'm just like... I mean, it's dude, true, dude. Doss is not lying. Today? He's not lying, like, Sloss. I don't think Aches... I don't think Aches has the best snapper, though. I think Aches is very smart and very good player. Yeah, do with my skill. It has, it, has with the, it has to do with the guy's skill that's sitting directly next to me. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> it has nothing to do with my skill, bro. Uh, I put the no. I'm not saying you, you, no, dude. If we're being real, no Adam, guys. you're 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 inconsistent in terms of like skill, and also a big thing about you is, and you you can attest to this. There's days you get on where you're shooting circles, point blank, period, and there's days you get on where you're not missing. But guess what? There's not a day where Dashy gets on and he's missing. It, there's just not a day that that happens. Yeah, but we're talking about practice. We're not talking about the tournament. We're not okay. talking about. Okay, but it's not like that. Practice. It's not like that anymore, Adam. Like, you, you, practice is almost as important as the tournament now. Like, you show up to the tournament and you have to be well practiced. These teams are amazing. SMP leagues, it's horrible, dude. These teams are amazing now, dude. Like, these players have gotten a lot better, and you cannot just get shit on at scrims and go into the simpler. tournament and expect to win. So like this whole like persona that like I I've streamed every single of our scrims this year. I'm flat out just playing with people that just aren't as good as me. I mean, that's probably true, but to say that you have as good of gun skill as like TJ Decimate and them is just that's just not true. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. They're aggressive and like you know, like that's what I'm saying. Like, Even I like, say I'm not that. saying you're a bad player. I'm, not, I'm just saying the snapper's not there. You're obviously you could outsmart them in any match. You can I'm a, listen, them, man, you can beat them. I've like, always been a saying. player that has played around my team, right? Yeah. I, I get three players, right? I'm like, all right, I got two subs and a main AR. You know, I gotta fill gaps, or I have two slow pokes and a sub. Now I gotta run a sub. I've always been the player to take the L. Like, 
you know, I'm not going to make somebody play out of their comfort zone. I'd rather play out of my comfort zone because when the time comes, I'm going to perform. That's the way I like to look at it. And a lot of players don't realize that, like, there's been a lot of players played out of their comfort zone. That's the thing about the I community. do that all the time. Like, I was talking about this the other day, like TP and Merck. Like, I was, like, debating on, like, who's top 10, this and that. And then players like TP and Merck just get big time or just get forgot, forgot about because they created a play style that kept their team in the game. They didn't create a play style that, you know, where they can go off. They created a play style that if their teammates weren't doing as good, you would notice them doing a lot better because they're keeping them in the game. Yeah. Like Merck, who always played the outskirts of the map. Yeah, sure. He could have cut mid-map half his lives, right? He could have cut mid-map half his lives and got kills. Yeah, I mean, he had the gun skill to do it. But that's not what won the games. <clears throat> he knew he had a... Create a style that kept his team in the game. Oh, dude, Joe Joe had a harder with. job than I did on my team when I played with him. Dude, I sat up top of a building the whole time. I looked like the yeah, Messiah. He set, you, he set you up. He was sprinting out of logs, like trading my kills. So, yeah, I mean, you do. there is some merit to that. But I don't think COD has played like that anymore. So, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't think. And I'm also not saying that you don't have the skill to do it. I'm saying in your in your position in life right now, with having two kids, a girl, a it's family, not smart, yeah. well, every day is competitive. You have, you, you, yeah, no, but I'm what you should put your time into is fucking coaching the team. A long term plan. A long term plan. The only thing that's keeping me on the edge of wanting to compete is Treyarch dropping the game. <laughs> Dude, like, that's what I'm saying. So, there comes a time, though, where you got to make a tough decision. You know what I mean? Like, for me, not playing. Adam, do you know how hard of a decision that was for me? Like, dude, I've always been able to compete. Like, there's never been a time where I wasn't in the league. This was the first time. Like, dude, I, I made the decision, and, like, I don't know if it's going to be a good one yet, but I feel like it is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there just comes a time when you get to a certain age it's hard, bro. It's hard. It's hard if you're if you don't have like the teammates around you. You're realizing you're just reaching out to like so many people, and like you see yourself helping COD like come like you're helping grow COD. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm trying right to do. Right now, yeah. one of the few pinnac or one of the few people that are like like right now, like you know, just getting that content out there, getting pe like you know, getting pe people people to put their eyes on it. Yes, like when I came up in Call of Duty, I remember Nature and Hex, all them telling me, Duty player, I ran the scene, I made the choices, right? Hey, drop him, I'm picking him up. I made the calls, right? Yeah. I remember Hector and I, I don't remember, I just remember it was one. They said, dude, if you think you're going to be able to compete the rest of your life, shoot your gun and hit your rotations and, you know, smoke your cross, whatever you want to say, they were like, you're delusional. You are. No. I mean, I mean, the reaction time thing is kind of a stretch, I, because your reaction time isn't at a pinnacle until you're 25. I think the biggest thing is life comes at you. Like when you're 18, yeah. when you're 18, you can just grind. You're still at home probably. Your 19, 20, basement. 21. Even these people were like 22, 23. They're still at home, just making money and living there with no stress. For me and for Sloss and for for all a lot of people. Life comes at you, bro, and those external stresses and things that you have to deal with affect you in like ways where 100%, it, it affects you. One hundred percent, dude. One hundred percent, dude. Yeah, and I, think that, I mean, and I think that that negatively that's... impacts the amount you play and the enjoyment dude, at, you have when you play. I'm at like that point in my life now, like in real life, like, like I had a job, I have a job offer on the table, and it's like, yeah, do I drop my really paying good job now where i'm i have a house i have a family i have everything i want in life i have a new car why do i just drop my job where i'm happy right now to go for better for more money or am i do i just stay content and stay happy you know like what if this new job yeah it's more money but what if it's way more stressful and i don't even you know and like yeah that's a tough wouldn't dude. have been a good life choice you know and it's like such a what it's weighing on my shoulders like what do i do like yeah, that's anything in life, and exactly I think that that said. I agree with you, Ant. What you said affected me. I W. Yeah. Wait, excuse me. What you ask me? Three. What you said? Balancing the responsibilities. Oh, okay. In life. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. He really hit me hard in I W, especially when Phil passed, because that was like my outlet of just being able to talk and just have some fun and get away from the reality, right? Yeah. He hit me hard in I W. Really dude, that shit hard. hit me hard too, dude. I think that that's like a big reason, like the beginning of my Black Ops Three or or, or beginning of my IW, like was so stressful. 
Because uh, that, that shit was hard, dude. Like, that was really hard to deal with, bro. And I don't think people no. realize that that was, like, a huge, a huge thing for a lot of us. Like, I'd say, was, like, me, you, Doss, there was, like, what, six, probably, like, six or seven other people who were really close a to dozen. him. A yeah, dozen. It, was like, it was, like, a dozen yeah, people, bro. And it hurt a lot of our ears that year, dude. Like, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking about all those people on the top of my, on the top of my mind. And they all, they all had, like, a lot of turmoil that year, dude. Thinking about it, shit like, was even hard, like, dude. Even like somebody like, you know. Excuse me, say that again. I couldn't hear you. Or some like example for some like study, you know. Yeah, M two, like Spacely. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, that that shit was yeah. hard to deal with. I think that it hit you the hardest because like, like I mean, we were all really good friends, but I think you and him like had like a different like. A different connection like different friendship like i thought i was one of his best friends too but you guys just connected in like a way that i don't think anybody else did so i think that that's like a, a huge thing that probably like stunted your bounce back in iw because who did you start the year off with i don't remember oh man mox wheat and mirror yeah so in, on top of trying to get better at the game like that, that had to be like tough but uh, <clears throat> I need to. I need if I am going to compete, and anybody who is wanting to compete, cheer out there, whatever. You need to. You need to start getting the work in now. You need to start talking now. You need to start getting that circle now, because you know when the game drops, you will get left behind if you don't start thinking like. Don't fall. It's just like it's facts, dude. IW dropped, and I remember I was still going through like you know my mind was all over the place. And IW dropped, and I was like, "Well, who am I playing with?" As Wheats is available, it's the only player available. I guess we're playing with him. And that's like really when my career started going downhill. Is when I just like myself with with, with people I want to play with, people that like you know I know I can win with, instead of just getting stuck with the scraps. Yeah, so we talk about balance, right? So that was a time in your career where you couldn't balance everything. So we Please. talk about that, and it's like, do you think even some of the things that happened to you throughout your career were even balanceable? Like, do you think you could have even balanced it? Like, because some of those things just have to take precedent, you know what I mean? And that's Nothing what I could have done, man. Exactly, and that's why I said, Nothing I could have done. That's why I said, Doss, I know you, you agreed with this. Life comes at you fast. And when you're yeah. young, you're not dealing with a lot of these issues. Like, there's a lot of yeah. people who aren't dealing with it. When I shit know. like that happens, you can't do anything about it, like, at all. Mm -hmm. But, uh... I can't control my emotions, you know? Like, I mean, I can, but, like, a lot of, like, it would always be on my mind. It's just crazy, always, that whole Phil situation. I would always make up excuses. Man. I would always make up excuses. Yeah. Just being, like, it just, I wasn't the champion I was. I wasn't Speaking the mindset Fizzer, player I was, but I feel like over time, like, I feel like I've gotten, like, IW was so bad. It was horrible. Like, I was, like, all over the place. I was showing up to events, not even, like, caring about playing the event, you know? Like, you know yeah. how it is, the anticipation leading up to the event, you know, when you're confident in your team and you're confident in yourself. I remember. No, that was not playing for a whole year, you know? Remember, I would just always get on, just be like, Mwah. Hold the mic a little closer, Adam, because you're cutting out. You know, I'm just like, ah, like this and that. Like, why am I? It was just all excuses. It was all. <clears throat> so. All stress. A lot of it. And I so, feel like. Now I want to ask you, though, like, so. yeah, I, I get that, like, the stress and stuff and trying to balance, like, and you couldn't balance something because it was impossible. Like, no human mind, no man can, like, balance some of the things that happen. And I went through that shit, too. But, um. In terms of like what you're gonna do in the new game, like I feel like you should have a plan. Do you even like do you, what? Do, what do you want to do? Like if you were to pick like the most enjoyment, what would you what would you pick? Playing, coaching, or content? Let's do battle royal. Like honestly, I would love to. I want you know me. I would want, I would love to be able to compete with people. I feel like I should be competing with. Right, I feel but, like. But I do you say, think like, that that's a smart decision? Like no. when you when you say okay, so the most fun you think gambled would be competing. My whole COD career, I've always gambled, and it's always either paid off or it hasn't. But it's gotten to where I am today, you know. But those gambles, Adam, those gambles pay off in like like a quick or, burst. Like it pays off for like three months, and then it doesn't pay off anymore after that. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, I would rather. I don't know. 
I would love to be able to produce content, but the viewership has to be there. We have to be everybody in the league, everybody who loves COD, everybody has to be trying to grow this thing, man. You can't yeah. have, like, we can't depend on Optic Gaming viewership or a phase. We can't depend on these things, man. We need to build our own brands, our own personalities. We need to help each other out. If you're in the league, you should automatically, we talked about this one day, you should have to stream 40 hours a month. There needs to be some incentive that, you know, like, I feel like you're growing COD because COD was at its pinnacle at the top. Everybody was producing content. Everybody. Yeah. You know? So hey, he's playing. When do we we hold, him and see what they're saying. When do we hold some of the orgs accountable, though? Because if you're paying your player to compete and win, that's fine, sure. But shouldn't the orgs be producing content for some of the players? I, at least in my opinion, I think that that's a big deal. Like, if you're going to pay these guys enough. Topic, getting into the, the return of the investment, right? I don't, I don't know. That's one thing I don't want to get into, but. Okay. I mean, that's fair. Saying, though, like, if I don't know, like. All right, so like, if this org is paying these teams a certain amount, where's their return? You know, I their investment. Not. I mean, I think that there's it's long term plans for all these orgs. If, that is if, true. if COD ever turns into Overwatch World League, that, I think that's kind of like what people hope for one day. Yeah, they wanted to franchise what Black Ops Four heard that back. it's going to a franchise, and then that's when the orgs will. There'll be, you know, like the Luminosity Gamings, those teams, the Envies, the Phases, the Optics, they're going to have first dibs on the franchise spots. Exactly. And that's when they make money, when it goes franchise, because then the game has to pay them, you know? Bro, that'd be some shit if the next game is franchise like and, I'm not, and I'm not competing. Oh, man, that stressed me out just thinking about it. Yeah, but you got to understand, uh, guy, you, guys got the into, you guys got into COD when it was just up and coming. Too early. This is a long-term plan, but man. But this is long-term, and you guys aren't part. part of it. So you got to figure out your long-term plan. You got to figure out your role, yeah. And that, that's what I've been doing. Like, obviously. And you guys started this kind of thing. You guys could have a spot wherever you want if you just dedicate your time and, you know, don't ruin your re- reputation on Twitter and shit. And that's yeah. what I think, Adam, you should be focusing on. God's getting bigger. Man, you, you could be such an asset, and it's not too late to, like, switch up, like, In any different that negative aspect view. of it. It doesn't even have to be coaching, man. It could be developing. It could be anything. It could be, you could, be, help, too, you could be helping build these maps. Like, anything. At all. You know what maps these pros want to play on. You know the three lanes. You know where, she, you know, like. Nah, that I've tried to get my point. I've tried to get my point across numerous times. No, nah, you've went about it in a bad way, and you've made a lot of people like not reach out to you because there's other people that they can talk to. They don't have to talk to you. So when you like do that, it makes people like shut you out, kind of like. Yeah, and I, and... like I'm real arrogant when people see me like typing some or a response. It just seems like. Oh yeah. What did yeah. I say last night? I said, every time I've seen you have a conversation about something like this, one on one in person. The other person never argues back because you're making clear sense. Like, it's easy for them to understand, and you're spitting facts. But when you're tweeting it, it makes no fucking sense, which is why you, you've, you've needed a, a, a manager your whole career, which is, like, something that's been tough. So that you I tried. I tried helping him. Like yeah. I said, and he was so, like, it... it no, 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 no. Can hard. You touch on these like... gentlemen's agreements, though. Like, sure, we... let's, let's roll in gentlemen's. Yeah, 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 let's roll into a topic because this needs to be discussed, and this is something that I am really passionate about. I actually, have that. I had that listed to talk about. We'll roll into it now, though. I'm a player, I'm a player that pulls out the shoddy, right, and gets weird. I'm a player that pulls out the scorpion or the waffle. You know, when when I got accused of ringing, got banned, they pulled my IP because I was shitting on them with a waffle. <laughs> and apparently, that was gentlemen's agreement. And I didn't know that. <laughs> wait what you got ba- wait i don't understand wait hold on how do you get banned for using a g8 gun i was ringing oh like, you're ringing oh and they knew yeah, it was so you I, I forgot that part excuse me so i'm the only one to play like that <laughs> and, and, and i didn't ring to get anywhere cheap i did it for competition like to the match meant nothing. I literally yeah. did it because it was the only competitive thing to play at the time, other than these five team S and D tourneys. I remember sure. we even dropped out of like a twenty dollar tourney. Me and Trevor were like, "Dude, let's play this." Like these kids, right? These are the amp kids in the community. It was like BZ, hot. Like these are the kids who have the most pro points in the amp community. So you know, so I was like, "All right, let's play the match. Like it's going to be competitive. We'll run some respawns. It'll be fun." I didn't think it would turn into. 
to what it turned into. And that's what kind of upset me because you should be confident enough in yourself and the people around you. That's how I was like growing up playing COD. I was like, I don't care who we're playing against, man. Like, you know, I don't care who they have, who their fourth is, how yeah, fair the teams are on picks. I don't care about any of that. Just worry about your four showing up in this. And that really opened my eyes and just like really showed like how pathetic our AMP community is. I, I hate saying it. Pathetic, dude. Like the people in the AMP community <clears throat> in America are not getting anywhere. They're not, they're not turning their next year around. They're not doing, they're, they're yeah. maintaining. I'm maintaining. Like look at, uh, not mind freak, tainted minds. Look at tainted minds. Like there's no reason why tainted minds should be able to qualify for the league with the practice they have, right? And the practice, doing it. They can only stream one team that gives them good practice, and that's Mind Freak. Like, in America, you have numerous. You should always be able to get good practice. Like, there's no reason why a team in a different region that only has one pro team to scrim against can just come over and just smoke our AMP community. That is embarrassing. That is flat out. Yeah, just and, and show, like, it, just show, it just goes to show the effort that people are putting in. And it, you've been a part of, like, the AMP scene for – for a little bit now like obviously full of players you're in is the am scene and like what's the difference you think like the main difference like the pros and ams like outside of skill like communication obviously like the easy thing what do you think was the main chance from the start to be honest but um they don't want to learn they don't know they anything and they they like, they're, 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 they're i can't even touch already. on one thing dude you they don't know anything down, right? You can't, man. That's they don't why have. They're not winners, dude. They're just not winners. They're the same people who've been getting smoked their whole lives. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to play. I, I kind of had that uh the, that thought process, but uh into the gentlemen's agreements. What do you think is like the issue with that? And I know you've hated them your whole career. So like, kind of starting with like Ghost is when it got big. Uh, it's been like a plague. You think in your mind, it's been like a plague in Call of Duty. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, re reaching out to every single, like, we need to be reaching out to every single, like, type of, uh, not to, like, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, you know, like, people, like, look at CS, look how big CS is, they're reaching out to everybody, you know, older people want to see, like, more tactician gameplay, you know, like, yeah. everybody has their different enjoyments sure. of why they like what or something, everybody has their own and I feel like what this community is, they're all kind of similar-minded. Opportunity for everybody. They ruin the opportunity for my fans who like seeing tactical base gameplay and gun bounds. You know? Maybe yeah. they ruin it for other fans who like bigger maps or, or, or gun variety or whatever. Like, we're, we're reaching out to a small audience, right? We don't understand that. We could be reach out to everybody, but we choose to reach out to the small the small fan base that cares about gun skill or cares. I'm sorry. We're still getting on every day shooting the PPSH. You don't think people are so wait, wait. bored of watching the PPSH shot. Where are you like, going you don't with think that people though? Wanted... I think we should get rid of the PPSH. I don't know if I agree with that. I think it's pretty balanced. I use a WAF. I use a WAF, right? That's gentlemen's, right? Yeah. Okay. Wait, the WAF is not gentlemen's, is it? Yeah, who knows what? anymore, man? I don't, I don't think the WAF is gentlemen's. Either way, though. Tweet earlier. Either way, bro, I literally, my IP pool for using a different gun. Like, that's the, that's ridiculous. That's like where I'm going. It's like, people do not want to watch, became fans of me, people, Phil, uh, Clay, uh, you know we all had our own unique styles and ways we thought and that's what people really liked and a lot of my fans still say to this day like i don't want to get on every day and watch a two-gun meta and yeah. watch people throw semtex well, what do you like, what do you do about stale. stuff that's blatantly op because you're bringing up a lot of good points like those are very good points and you We're could argue those so stale. would you so so you're basically i think what you're saying is you'd rather play a game where the stuff's allowed that's less like competitive OP. but it's more appealing to the viewership that's fair. I mean, I think that's a fair mindset. I think that's two ends of the spectrum. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there's the pro community, and they have the way they feel. They're competitive, so they're going to do that, which I see. And then there's, like, that community. So it's since there's two sides, since there's two sides, though, Sloss, right? 
you have to find common ground and that common ground is the developer, developer support exactly so there's 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 no reason to put any like any pressure onto the pros because they're competing they want to have like the, the most like genuine outcome and then in terms of like the fans like they want to see everything that they use in pubs and competitive probably too so you got to have the developer make that decision for you so i don't think that you can place the blame on pros and, and, or, or like in, in my opinion but you 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 do think that and why is that i don't i don't understand why competitors, man we're competitors we like this year for example like people are granted no long barrel on the bar i don't know i was hearing all types of ridiculous nonsense okay leave even if the game isn't good even if the game isn't competitive leave that to them you know oh i think this but is they're not always going to fix it like it takes a while but that's the l we have to take we have to I, we have to take that L. We can't sit here and just keep trying to get the game and then keep trying to make our own game out of the game. No, because it just gets confusing and it's not appealing. People don't know what's going on. People are scared to get into Call of Duty because they don't really know what's going on. <laughs> the game has changed a lot, so I'm waiting on that. The community is so separate from the pro community. So there's no one community anymore. I mean, I think that has a lot to come down with developer support too, though. Hundred percent, it does. No, I mean, if I logged onto my, if I logged on the Call of Duty and seen that there was a big MLG tournament or something, I could watch it from my phone. Give you a prime example this year, Ant, right? Or for my sure PlayStation, like I don't know. All right, they changed the game completely, right? Remember they put, remember they did that whole armor thing, this and that. Yeah. Uh, They made a tack mask thing, right? Yeah, I remember a meta right bigger picture they tried to create a meta what did the community do they got enraged we got rid of airborne yeah and it ruined the balance it ruined the the whole it made stuns completely useless like us getting rid of something was cheesy we thought gung-ho was cheesy the aiming i don't care how cheesy you think it is it needs to be in the game and it if you don't like it, get over it. Use armored. But the gentleman's it just just messes up the whole meta. It messes up literally what they 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 tried to help us this year. It's the pro community wants to play one way. That's it. I mean, they want it to be the most competitive. If there's anything cheesy, they're gonna get rid of it. Can you blame and them though? Title never grow. Just like Bob's too. Well, guess what we said when we added streaks. When we added that fat. What did we say when we came together as a community? We said it doesn't matter how competitive it is. We need it to be appealing, not competitive. That's very appealing. true. I just think that that's that's the developer's job, man. I don't I don't think that that's our job. I don't think it's our job. Our job is to it for us. It, it, we went out of our way, and we said no airborne. They gave us the tools. They gave us the perks, the new system. Yeah, to the best of their knowledge, they made an update that. for us. Yeah, true. We just totally disregarded that once again and made our own rule set and our own gentlemen. You do have a very good point there. And uh, I would love it for like a season for there to be no I would have gave up at that point too. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Like they actually had a good idea, and we're like, "Hey, no airborne!" So everybody is running smokes now. Yeah. Now everyone's running. Hello. <laughs> that just why got rid of the meta. trying to make? Why do they think they're developers? <laughs> Let them do that. We played the game. I mean, you bring up very good points. I, I, I think both sides can be argued. Uh, I just think that 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 whole like update and that whole fiasco was just terrible. Like both sides it was just terrible. Like I think change a game completely halfway through, it, but yeah, I mean that that's that was like the but big thing. Not, I mean, how do you guys feel about it on like the analyst desk and shit? Uh, about like gentlemen's. Yeah, like. I mean, I, I personally would like, I, I would want the game to be played the way it's played, like the way they intended. You I would or? like, I mean, personally, I would like the developer to just make a good game where we don't need as many de- or changes. But um, I think that in terms of gentlemen's, like I, lo- I wanted to see the intro. Like when I stopped playing, I was like, I want to see the intro and play. I want to see airborne, like stuff like that. Uh, there's certain things that I didn't like that got gentlemen's, but I understand why, why it got Gentlemen's agreed to not use, but... I'm going to be honest. I stopped playing COD this year after they fucking nerfed the FG. For, like, the second time, literally. Yeah, you got to think. Anytime you tweak something, you, you, you like, you uh, exile a, a fan, right? Like, there's there's at least one fan out there that you're just exiling when you change something. 
So well, the, I'm a fan, dude, and I'm telling you from a viewer's standpoint, <laughs> from a viewer's standpoint, I feel like the COD community Damn. makes the game, the pro community makes the game stale. It's the same shit over and over. Same gun, same this, same that. And like, all it's going to switch in persons. Nameless, you just literally brought up the, you just put the words right in my mouth. Every <laughs> time you gentlemen something, you are losing hundreds of fans, whether you believe it or not. Yeah, it's true. I always have this discussion with my chat, and they always agree with me, and they're just as stubborn as I am, and they know where I'm coming from because <clears throat> they know the type of player I am. They know, like, I wish I would have just played PC, and I wish I would have just played Counter-Strike. I would give up all my accomplishments, all my whatever. Yes, I would. I would go back and play a game that really is based around strategy and not just running around. Yeah, I would have done that too. <laughs> look at CS. Look how many different guns are used, different tags. There's a money system. There's so much that goes into it. When we talk about COD, we're not talking about, you know, oh, let's hop on board like a killer here. Man. Wow, let's hop on board a killer here as he's using the shotgun. This is, this is rare. Like, when shotgun gentlemen? Like, wh when did all this start, man? I don't After understand. After Ghost, that, when, you, when you started using LMG was when gentlemen's became a big thing. People couldn't use it. And it, it was a really, big really big thing when Black Ops 3 dropped. Do you remember? Banner Protect was the best thing to happen. Banner Protect was pretty good, yeah. I mean, I thought I, I thought it was happened. awful in terms of the way we did it, but I thought the so the, the concept I thought the concept was really cool. But the way we did it was awful because we just banned the same things every time. But uh, it was also well, lame when somebody that, would... That's true. That's what took pro community... It was also to... lame when people would ban, like, fast hands. So I, if they were to limit the amount of, like, things you can ban, it would have been cool. But I don't know. That. Nobody was doing that stuff unless they knew they were just outclassed. You know? Like, it yeah, goes true. back to putting... Like, you're not going to be grinding to... Like, sure, if you want to have... If you want to have your fast hand strategy, like your, your cold team did in the beginning, that wasn't that good, let's be honest. Yeah. That's because you guys were practiced with some. But when it got protected, you guys couldn't, like, adapt. Like, you know, you guys. I just thought it was a little cheesy the way you can brace for it, stuff like that. Like, there's there's ways you can make it better, but the concept in itself I thought was really cool, yeah. For sure. Like, you well, guys banned every AR that. against us, which was whack, dude. Oh. Huh. What? It was, but it was fresh. Yeah, it was. It was cool. It was new. People it was like watching it. It's not about what's competitive anymore. We need to realize that what we've been trying to make the game competitive, and obviously it's not. The viewership's not there. You know, <laughs> obviously it's not really going in our way. The, the, all this, we need to try something new. Remember Bops Two when we threw everything out the. We used to play with stun nades. You used to not be able to avoid a stun nade. Yeah, that was crazy. So we, dude. Know, we started fresh. We didn't just jump into rules, maps, this and that. We tested it. If it wasn't for the year of the streaks, wouldn't it be in Call of Duty if we didn't try something new? Think about that. Yeah, that's a good point. You bring up good points. Streaks I don't know, man. Be. Maybe Sauce is on to something here, bro. Maybe maybe we need to we need to not jump in. more appealing for fans so they're not tuning out because, hey, I'm bored of watching a PPSH and a bar shot all day. 100% <laughs> accurate. And like I said, I'm from a viewer standpoint, I watch COD, you know, and I still watch it to this day. I don't know why I get bored of it, but I just I'm a big fan of the teams and the players that are in it. But I mean, once these new up and coming players come, and I don't know these players anymore that are in this league, I'm not going to tune in, uh, you know. They, Let's talk about that for a second, it. then. What happens when a lot of the favorites and old players retire? Like I retired, Damon retired, Sloss might as well be retired, Mir's retired. When Haggy retires, AX, Cap, those people, because it's it could be coming up soon. Is we, that is that bad? Like, is that potentially like really hard yeah, call to do? People that are stepping yeah. into those positions aren't producing content. It's horrible. <clears throat> yeah, it's scary a little bit. It's horrible. Yeah, content, that's why I feel bad for MLG and shit because they put so much effort into this, man. I mean, people I think, think I think the orgs in the leagues. Grow this, I think the man. orgs in the leagues will put, will make a lot of content, but in terms of the players. I guess I guess we need to get to a point where Call of Duty is such a big enough esport to where you can just get fans by being good. You know what I mean? Because that happens in other esports. You can just be really good and have a shit ton of fans. It's not really like that in COD right now. Counter Strike, I'm a fan of simple. Like uh, like Fort, Fortnite, for example, Tifu has thousands of fans. He's brand new. Yeah. Hundred percent. Black Ops Four Battle Royale. What do you boys think about that? 
My plan, so you guys want me to let you in on my plan? My plan is to grind that and become the ninja of Blackout. <laughs> Facts, you don't have to depend on nobody. All this teammate talk. <laughs> dude, I want to... Myself. That's what I'm saying, dude. And, like, you can play duo squads. That's a good right? opportunity for people. Oh, man, I can't wait for that. And, like, the thing is, when all these people are competing and stuff, like... I have the dedication. You come out with a good format for the battle royale competitive scene. There's not like a good format where you can determine who who's the best. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we have the dedication, like to to put in so many hours into a game and get better at it. Like I can, I feel like I can be good at any video game with the time that I put in. And if it's COD on top of that, like I can just grind the hell out of it. And why these guys are screaming? Like I can just be playing Blackout. Like I've already thought about it. I just want to play it so much. I hope it's fun. Uh, that, that, that's that's kind of like one of my plans is to like play that do rank play produce a shit ton of content make new podcasts like that's something i'm thinking about but I, that's what we kind of had this conversation earlier so i don't want to get back into it but like that's something i think you should try to podcast that's what I, that's something yeah. i think you should try to do sloss hey dan anytime bro but yeah what what just like grind the new modes that are coming out and like just oh. put a lot of time into it that's another reason why like i haven't been as consistent in streaming like they're like, into, like, the eternity grind, you know? Don't get it twisted, but it's just, like, you know? <clears throat> like, just uh, the content, you know? Just being able to, like, get on and know, like, hey, sc Screams, s and Tourney's, like, it's lit. COD's lit, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's not as lit right now. That's true. Lit. And, but people are getting bored of... When Fortnite dropped, it crushed us, dude. We lost we our s and community to Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. Lo yeah. Completely yeah. lost our s and community to Fortnite. Yeah, all the little kids who just gamble and don't care are now just gambling on that game. Yeah, it's tough, dude. What about what about like, Fortnite? Like, there's a hundred million dollars in prizes. Have you ever have you even thought about playing that? I thought about that for a little bit. <laughs> just for a second, I just realized I just wasn't good enough. I don't I don't have the time. <laughs> I don't have the time to get good at a game like like you said. You're already good at COD. You already have a step ahead. Time to just be able to throw throw away our past career or. or it, it's not nearly like like you said gambling the it's not you know i'm not really seeing the bigger picture if i'm switching and playing fortnite competitively you know yeah myself being able to win <laughs> yeah i mean out of do you think that you not being able to have that dedication on fortnite might translate to not being able to put as many hours as in a player like dashy on cod like that's something that i, I was thinking about earlier like if you're thinking about competing like, dude, you got to be putting in a shit ton of hours, bro. Well, it just goes back to just, like, to even be able to just get the mechanics down, it'll take me months, maybe even years, you know? I already have the COD mechanic, like, you know? Like, yeah, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Natural at this point, but like, I'm so hmm. far behind in Fortnite. Mechanics, you know? Like, I don't even play on the right building settings. Like, just so far behind. Like, with me, it'd be no chance. Maybe others, you know, that, like, can... It's a smile on your face and it makes you happy and it's what you want to do, go for it. But <clears throat> I just don't see myself even make money off of it, you know. Like I, I at the end of the day I can't just get on and waste time, you know. I gotta I got a family to feed too. I respect that. Um do you plan on going into any events the rest of this year? Are you going to Anaheim? Maybe if I'm coaching, but no, nah, I'm not going to Anaheim. Isn't that right around the corner? Yeah, that's in two days we I leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, definitely not. I mean, I don't that, but uh, <laughs> maybe coaching. I mean, I'm not allowed to play. Like, I am actually banned until the Wait, you're not drops. allowed to play at events? No, I'm banned. Oh, I thought it was just GB. Holy shit, dude. I'm banned All because of the WAF, dude. The WAF. <laughs> well, I, I literally got the last kill with a WAF when I was 10 and 0, and they left the lobby. <laughs> they didn't even play. We're up 4 0, and they didn't even play the rest of it out, dude. They automatically got on support and was like, he's using a wall. Damn, dude. That's a, see, that's a mistake right there. That's, that's a classic instance of Sloss not thinking, of, Sloss not thinking about the future. It's Automatic, so cool, Dan. I some competitive, and it was just stupid, dude. <clears throat> Automatic, bro. Dan, that's probably been stressful for you to see from the outside, like, so, for so long. It's just, yeah, I mean, no, I mean, it's, you know, like, all. Always coming up, like he dedicated so much damn time to it, like and like to see the success early on, and then like the strive to be like on top again, like the dedication, like time, and like I was only doing it to get better. Sad to say. Yeah, facts. Yeah. 
I mean, dude, to get better at the game and playing a competitive best of five. I didn't think it was like these leagues were like that. I thought like we had no the team I ring for had no chance. Qualify. You just didn't, you, you just didn't hard, think it through. Qualified. You just didn't think it through. Like being honest, like you you just you, you didn't think it through. And it, it was, it was it bad. Through, I didn't think it was that serious. Yeah, and uh, that's serious. Yeah, and I was the example that God has been making of me for years. I mean, you pine you help pioneer this shit though. So it's like, I feel like the community should still have your back, and I, I think that that's what that's kind of like why I wanted to do this was because a lot of people know about your story, but. I feel like people like they, they get lost and they yeah, they don't have your back and they they, they got lost kind of along the lines of all the shit you've said and done. People kind of like they got lost in like your personality. You know what I mean? They thought you were just like this entertainer, but just I don't think I had or something. yeah, like this this like this meme, but it's not really even like that. So it's 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 tough. I only recover to get respawn reps in. That's so sad. Yeah, the and, and, and you're misunder. The match meant something. I wouldn't have done it. You're misunderstood. Beca- you're misunderstood because people think like I think like oh, I kill is an idiot for doing that, but it's like, dude, you're just trying to scream. You didn't. Valkyrie S and D. I only yeah. did it to play Valkyrie S and D. That's it. Yeah. Sad to say. Yeah. I mean that that, and I think you have an opportunity now though with the new game coming out to like kind of change the community's opinion again, and, like just grind. I think you should pursue that coaching thing. But uh, are there any other topics you guys wanted to touch on? Oh, I just, kind of, yeah, we kind of got stuck in that mindset where we were debating it, or I was at least. I mean, I, I, dude, we talked about a lot. That was like we kind of went all over the place a little bit, but that's how the that's how this was gonna be. I already knew. There's, there's yeah, just dude, so much. Like time we're actually like actually actually into what we were saying, which was yeah. I mean, it was an hour thirty like of just talking like straight up like the whole time just discussion. Like I had topics and I just threw them out because I'm like, all right, we're just gonna talk about some real shit yeah. and just discuss stuff. Like, dude. Oh, no, I just think we could talk all just, day, bro. We could just with the right talk support, all day. With the right support, I think COD could really grow, and I just would love to see more of the pro community put an effort into producing content for the viewers like myself who enjoy watching the people at the top. You know, like when I first got into COD, I had something to tune into every day, no matter what. Scumless, scumless, Turn into anything, like it's yeah. Just, uh, gunless, gunless, gunless. Like all this, I keep hearing about. I know nothing about. Haley, he's a beast. Play. Hey, you're right. There needs to be more content pieces on people like Gunless. You know, what I mean, like we we need we need to be blowing this guy up right now. He's the best player in the game. I totally agree with that, dude. What is he doing, man? What is he doing? Uh, oh, there's a lot of knowledge that like that you have that you can spread. So where can people find you to give that knowledge? me to dm i'll say when i mean like i've always been real with like the people and even if i've talked shit it's all in game you know it's all for fun it's all for the viewership it's all for just entertainment people get that mixed up with me yeah. they don't realize that like i am a competitor like be a competitor and i know want to be an entertainer i knew my balance yeah, I mean, Years, maybe it got I think you should have, you should have, well, I mean, it's just like your tweets are hard to like tell what like, like what you truly mean behind it because you're aggressive as, as hell on Twitter. But I think you should, you should have some, somewhere along the line started a YouTube channel. Just, just some, somewhere just, just to like, talk and just like express what yeah, I'm trying like, to say. Yeah, like have talks like this almost. Yeah. I've thought about it, yeah. Like just trying to get my point across. You, you still have time to do that, bro. Like you should still be trying to do that. Like I can help you with that easily. It's not hard. You have a webcam and OBS, bro. Literally, you click yeah, yeah, record, right for my setup. upload it Insta, yeah. But uh, I think that's gonna wrap it up, yo. I can't. I actually can't wait to put this out. I I, I can't wait for people to see this. I think it's gonna be dope. Yeah, it's gonna be dope. Yeah. Thanks for you having should... me on it. You're Find me at DOS underscore. Yeah, like well. All right, yo. I'll say it for Sloss because he's not. He's not. Gonna, he probably doesn't even know. Twitch.tv slash K one L L A ninety three. You're live like every day, low key, right? Usually from about 4 p.m., 5 p.m. on. Usually I'll stream like real late night. Bro, if Sloss had a streaming schedule, a little bit better quality, no, right? and just had like like a tweet each week on Monday, like this is the week of 6, 12, 18. These are the hours I'm going to go live Monday to Saturday. I won't be live Sunday. I'm going to spend time with my fam. Bang, you would yeah. fucking explode, you know bro. What? 
knows it. He just doesn't want. He, he knows it. But that's a talk for another day. Much love, much appreciation for everybody tuning into this podcast. Um, like I said, we went a little bit all over the place, but I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. I had a really good time talking with Sloss and his brother Doss. You guys have a good one. Shout out to the real ones. Peace, guys. Much love and much appreciation. Much love.